am something of a pro when it comes to death piles. I have a lot of experience in the field of death pile keeping. And yes, for the sake of this video, we're gonna call a death pile a death pile because I genuinely think that it is the cause of death to a lot of things. I think for a lot of us, our death piles are a cause of death to our motivation. It is a cause of death to maybe some of our relationships with people in our family, in our household, because of how much space they take up. It is a cause of death to our wallets. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna call it what it is. And I know a lot of people like to call their death piles money piles. And maybe you are really good at tackling your money pile in a much more timely manner than I am. And if so, you can continue to call it a money pile all you want. Mine is a death pile. Let me show you. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body cameras, but you know. So let's start with some of the stuff that we have here. Um, this box probably has about roughly 50 pieces in it. This is stuff that I got from a fellow reseller. Um, she had, you know, purchased some wholesale stuff and sent me a pallet um, for pay. I didn't get it for free, obviously. Um, this stuff down here that looks like children's clothing is indeed children's clothing. It is stuff that my daughter is listing. It's all stuff that she used to wear, um, but no longer does. And then what's, I don't, what's in this bag? I'm not even sure. Um, nothing, nothing. Oh, no. I don't know. There's like one or two things in here. I don't know what's in there. This uh, box also has roughly around 50 pieces in it of stuff from the same wholesale palette. This um, bin has some clothes on it, probably like 20-ish pieces on top of there. Um, and I don't, I actually think this bin is empty, which makes me feel really good. Okay, there's a few pieces. This is stuff that I took to um, this really cool thrift store and they didn't end up taking that stuff. Um, down here, I've got some shoes that need to get listed with my pop corners that I love. Um, but yeah, these shoes need to get photographed and listed. This bin over here is full of stuff that needs to get listed and it's right next to my light box because it's all gonna get listed in there. And then over here, we've got a bunch of Vera Bradley bags as well as some men's clothing. This came from a friend of mine who wants to work out a consignment deal for all this stuff, but it has been weeks and I have not yet gone through all these things. Uh, one, cause I'm not super excited about it. Um, down here we have a box of stuff that I believe has like lacrosse gear in it from a friend of mine at church. Next we've got these racks and these racks also have uh, just a ton of clothes that needs to get listed and photographed. So this rack right here is stuff that is just ready to get photographed. And this rack right here is stuff that needs to get steamed first because it's just, you know, like a hot wrinkly mess. And so that's why um, I've got two separate racks there. I'm going to take you into my guest room. I got a lot of comments from people in my last video where I kind of showed my death pile. I mean, the video was not about death piles in particular, but I showed my death pile and people were like, you made me feel so much better about myself. Or people were like, I showed this video to my partner to show them like, I'm not the only one. So listen, I get it. Like a lot of us struggle with this, but okay. So all of this stuff here is stuff that I need to figure out. <laughs> it's stuff that I don't want to list and I have a plan for it. Um, I'm in the process of tagging stuff for this pop-up consignment sale that's coming up um, in a couple weeks here and I'll definitely have a video about that process and letting you know how much money I made and if it was worth it or not but this is all stuff that just you know it's not worth it for me to list myself because it's just not the kind of stuff that I want to be listing this tiny pile here is stuff that I want to send into the real real these shirts down here are like men's dress shirts that's like a J Crew collection dress and then there is a pair of boots by the band uh, band by the brand Schutz. Shoots? I don't know. Um, I'm going to take you downstairs and we're going to look at my dining room for the last bit of stuff that needs to get listed. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you again is because I want you to see how bad my problem is, but also I want to let you know that I have a plan and maybe my plan and my tips on how to get rid of your death pile. Whoa, that's my son. Um, maybe these things will be helpful for you the way that, you know, they're going to be helpful for me. But 
Maybe not. I don't know. I, I'm a very specific type of person and my tips are not necessarily going to work for everyone. It's going to work for you if you're similar to me. And my guess is if you have a huge death pile, you and I may have some similarities, right? So um, let's go through the last bit of death pile-ness here. So, whew, yikes, Cerrone. So um, in this bag is stuff that I am going to, geez, I don't even know right now. What are you? What is this stuff? I think this is stuff that I am wanting to tag for the upcoming consignment sale. I think that's what that is. This box here is stuff that needs to get listed, probably about 50 pieces in there. This needs to get listed, probably about 50 pieces in there. These are both from the wholesale palette. Um, this is stuff, this is just hangers um, for the consignment pop-up sale. This is stuff that I've tagged already, including these pants hanging. So technically these are not part of my death pile. Um, and then over here, there is a rack of stuff that needs to get listed. And they're in here because I've got like this nice rich blue wall in this room that, you know, white clothes, dark clothes looks good against. Over here, I've got stuff that needs to get listed. Originally, I had intended to um, either consign it, you know, elsewhere, not at this pop-up sale necessarily, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and list this stuff myself. Um, over here, I've got a couple boxes. These two boxes are things that came in the wholesale palette that need to get listed. And is that it? That might be it. So I showed you all of that to prove to you that I am a pro when it comes to death piles. I know what I'm talking about. And I also know the negative effect that death piles can have on a person. Um, and so that's why in this video, we're going to talk about tackling your death piles. And I'm just going to share any tips and strategies that I have for you. This is part of the reason why I have a death pile in the first place. I've been so distracted lately and just not listing a lot because I've been planting out my garden and starting seeds and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, let's get into some tips. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I am a hoarder. I don't know, so not really a hoarder. Like I, I have a plan for everything. I'm not just like holding on to things because of nostalgia or anything like that. Um, but I have way too much stuff accumulated that needs to get listed. I am a part-time reseller. I have a full-time job as a high school choir director. I live in this house with my family. I have two kids, a husband, um, none of whom are super excited about all the clothes that take up all this space in their house where they want to play and relax and do all those things. So it's something that needs to get taken care of. Also, in a couple weeks, I showed you some of that stuff that I have to get tagged for an upcoming pop-up consignment sale. And that is one of my favorite places to shop at and to source at for really great inventory. That's where I have found Magnolia Pearl and Johnny Was and Dress to Kill. Like I have found some of my highest selling pieces at this upcoming um, consignment sale. And so I want to be able to shop it without feeling super guilty about all the stuff that I have at home. And for that reason, I'm going to spend the next couple weeks really tackling my death pile. And to be honest with you, I don't have like an outline. Usually I have like an outline of things to talk about, you know, in these tips and tricks type videos. But I just was driving home from church today, kind of overwhelmed by the prospect of, you know, tackling my death pile and thinking about what I needed to do in order to be successful in getting as much stuff done as possible and getting as much of this listed as possible. And I thought, you know what, this would be a really good video idea. So if you are the opposite of me and you have your life together, you probably need to stop watching here. Like you, you know, are judging me already and you feel really good about your life. That's awesome. I'm glad I could do that for you. But if you are anything like me and you are a little bit of a hot mess and you have a lot of stuff in your home and you're a little bit overwhelmed because you know that you have to deal with this stuff, then I think that this video could be helpful for you. So if you are excited to tackle your death pile with me, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel to kind of see updates on how this project goes. But let's jump into some tips that I was thinking about on the way home. First of all, if you are anything like me, you have kind of an all or nothing personality. Meaning, if you can't do everything the way that you envision it, and if you can't get it all done at once, then you don't even want to start. And I think that is probably the biggest reason why a lot of us have death piles in the first place is because our death piles get bigger and bigger, and we get more and more overwhelmed because we're looking at it going, 
I cannot conquer that. I can't tackle that. It's too big. So I'm just going to keep turning my back on it. I'm going to keep ignoring it. And I'm going to just keep going out and doing what I love to do, which is source, which just adds to the death pile. So my first tip for you is instead of approaching your death pile with this all or nothing attitude, I would say just sit down and get one thing listed. That's your goal. Because again, I think with our all or nothing attitudes and personalities, we get upset with ourselves, even if we sit down and do like five hours straight work of photographing and listing and cross-listing, but we still have a huge pile left over even at the end of that five hours and we're thinking to ourselves, I failed. My goal was to conquer that pile. It's still there in some capacity. I failed. But instead of looking at something and saying to ourselves, I got to get rid of that, if we can go into a listing session and say to ourselves, I just need to get one item listed, a couple things are going to happen. First of all, you're going to get that item listed. Second of all, you're going to feel good that you got that item listed because you went into it with the expectation of, I just got to list one thing and you did. So you accomplished what you set out to do. And last but not least, if you can get one listing up, chances are you'll get into some sort of groove and you can get more than one listing up. So not only did you accomplish your goal, but you actually surpassed it. So you will end that listing time feeling better about yourself. That's my first tip. My second tip is with whatever time you got, batch work. So this goes against my first tip just a little bit, but hear me out. So let's say you've got 10 minutes. You've got 10 minutes before you have to leave the house to pick up your kids or before you got to go to work or something. You got 10 minutes with nothing to do, okay? I would say use that 10 minutes to do something that will help decrease your death pile. So maybe you don't have any photographs of any items. Take that 10 minutes and just photograph as many pieces as you can. You could probably get done, I would say like three to five pieces, right? So batch some photographing in that 10 minutes. And then later when you got another, let's say you got 20 minutes, you got 20 minutes before you got to get dinner started or before you got to meet up with a friend, you got 20 minutes and you've got these pictures from like three items on your phone. Take that 20 minutes and just say, okay, I have pictures of three items. I'm going to go ahead and list as many as I can in 20 minutes. So again, you're not really creating like an un attainable goal of I'm going to get rid of all my death pile like in this next 20 minutes, but it's just, I have 20 minutes. Let's see what I can do. So, you know, you're not really setting yourself up to be disappointed because you're not saying by the end of this 20 minutes, I better have 15 listings done, but it's just, I've got these pictures on my phone. I've got 20 minutes. Let's see what I can get listed. So even if you have small pockets of time, batch work in those small pockets of time, and you'll be able to accomplish more than if you did nothing at all. You know, if you sit there and you're like, I only have 10 minutes. Minutes, I can't do anything. I can't make a dent in this death pile. I mean, you actually can. You can photograph three to five things, so you may as well do that versus scrolling through Instagram needlessly for that 10 minutes. Be productive. The next tip that I have is create ways to motivate yourself. And this is different for everyone. Everyone is motivated by different things. For me personally, I am motivated when I'm making sales. And I think that's part of the reason why this problem has just stayed a problem is that 2022 has been awful for me sales wise. And so I've just not been super motivated to sit down and list because I'm not doing great when it comes to making sales. So for me, that means I have to come up with a different way to motivate myself. And when I think about what I enjoy when it comes to reselling, of course, I enjoy sourcing, right? I think that's like 99% of us. And so for me, I think the best way for me to motivate myself is to say, hey, as a treat, for listing X number of things or for selling X number of things, you can go on a big sourcing trip or you can spend an hour on Poshmark or Facebook Marketplace trying to find things to purchase to resell. You know, maybe it's that little pick me up sourcing trip that will motivate you to get more done. And you might be saying to yourself, well, that sounds counterproductive because you're only going to replace that small little dent that you made in your death pile with more stuff by allowing yourself to go sourcing. Yes, but we are human. We are reselling humans who got into this mess in the first place because we like to source. So you gotta like take five steps forward and if you take one step back, I think it's okay. I do. I do. So I think there are a couple ways to go about it. I think you can say, you know, for example, I showed you this rack here. Maybe you can say, once I get this rack steamed or once I get this rack photographed and listed, 
then I'm going to let myself go out and source. Or maybe, and this has actually worked really well, probably better than my previous example for me, is I'll say I'm not going to let myself go sourcing unless I list X number of items. Um, I think in the past I've said like 500 items. I think I've said I'm not going to go sourcing until I list 500 things. And that does a couple things. One, obviously it like kind of gets your butt into gear to sit down and list because you're like, oh, I got to list 500 items before I'm allowed to, you know, go out and source again. But also because you are listing so much, you're making more sales, you're getting more motivated and you're getting more motivated to list what's actually in your death pile. So that has worked a lot better for me than treating myself with little thrift trips. I actually prefer the method of saying I'm not going to let myself go sourcing again unless I've listed X number of items. For me, I'm not going to do anything like that this time around just because I'm just going to be honest with you. Regardless of if I list one thing or a hundred things, I'm still going to go to that pop-up consignment sale and go shopping because like I said, it's where I pick up some really good stuff. But I am going to put myself on a regiment of listing a certain number of things per day in order to at least, again, put a dent in that death pile before I bring more stuff home. Which takes me to my next tip. I don't even remember what number we're on. Are we on four, three? I don't know. If you are the type of person that needs structure and needs scheduling, then create one for yourself. Create some non-negotiables in terms of what you have to do each day before you're allowed to blank. Oh my God, my hair looks crazy. I'm so sorry. I, like I said, I was not prepared for this video, but maybe it is, you know, you have to list 10 items before you're allowed to take your evening bath. I don't know. Do you bathe every night. Maybe you have to list 10 items before you're allowed to watch the next episode of Bridgerton. Bridgerton? Brit Bridger. I don't watch it. I don't know, but I know it's like a hot show. Create a schedule for yourself that you know you will stick to, again, if you are that type of person. And I think the best way to do that is to think of the end result. How many listings do you want to have done by the end of the month? And then just kind of reverse engineer. Figure out how many you need to do each day. See if that's feasible. And then create a schedule as to when you're going to do it. What time of the day are you going to do it? Set that time aside. I do have a video right here where I talk about listing quickly and being productive while we list and getting rid of distractions and stuff that you can check out that maybe will motivate you even a little bit more after you finish watching this video, but definitely put that time aside to get your listings done. The last tip that I'll leave with you is this. When it comes to listing, just start with the first thing that you see. I think a lot of people waste a lot of time sitting there saying, I have to come up with a plan. What am I going to do first? Am I going to do kids stuff first? Am I going to do the men's stuff that I have in my house first? Am I going to start with shoes? Um, Am I going to start with high dollar stuff? Am I going to, and they sit there and like think through all these decisions and choices. And before they know it, they are exhausted (laughs) from all of that thinking and they call it quits. They don't even get one thing photographed. They don't get one thing listed because they're just reminded of how overwhelmed they are by their death pile. I would say when you've got that 10 minutes to do something for your reselling business, go to your death pile, whatever is on top, you pick it up. Even if you hate it with all of your heart, even if it's only going to make you $8, you pick that thing up, you photograph it, you list it, and then you just keep going with whatever's on top. We just need to get going. We just need to get started. I think we pick through our death piles looking for motivation, looking for that piece that we're going to look at and it'll be like, like we're just so excited about listing it and there will be a hundred other pieces like that. But let's be honest, don't we have death piles because maybe a lot of these pieces are bad buys or maybe some of these pieces are things that, um, you know, were given to us for free that they're like nice pieces, but they're just not exciting. You know, that's part of the reason why we have a death pile. But again, the fact is we cannot make money on those items unless we list them. They have no chance of selling unless they are listed. So I would say you just pick up whatever is at the top of your pile. You photograph that item, you photograph the top five items in that first 10 minutes, and then you list those items because I promise you what's going to happen is the more you do that, the more sales you're going to make. And the more sales you make, the more motivated you're going to be to continue listing and to continue tackling your death pile. And as that money continues to pour in, you will be motivated to keep getting after that death pile. And like I said, maybe, you know, you are the type of person that needs a little treat every now and then so you can treat yourself to a thrift trip here and there as that death pile dwindles down and you're able to fill in with pieces that you're excited about. But even unexciting pieces can make you money. I sell unexciting pieces 
all the friggin' time. <laughs> Things that I could not care less about, but they make me money because I make myself list them. I guess the very, very last thing, I lied. So, you know, I said the last thing was the last thing, but the very last thing I would say is if what's keeping you from listing is that you hate everything you have, then start over. Get rid of it, donate it, sell it on Flip, make mystery bundles on Poshmark, I don't care. If that's what's keeping you from listing is that you have a physical reaction every time you have to interact with this inventory that you hate, just get rid of it. Start over, learn from your mistakes, whether it's you were just buying stuff because it was cheap or I don't know. I don't know why you have all these things that you hate in your home, but then get them out of your house because you're not going to grow to love them. And if you've had them in your house for so long and you haven't been able to get up the energy or the motivation to list them yet, and this video hasn't done it for you either, then you probably just need to get rid of it and start over. Let me know what I'm missing down in the comments below. Let me know what tips you have for people like myself who have huge death piles and are perhaps lacking the motivation that it takes to get that death pile listed. If you enjoyed this video, if you feel like this was the kick in the butt that you needed, please hit that like button so that YouTube recommends this video to other resellers who also need a good kick in the butt. And if you enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing because I do put out at least two videos a week just like this, sometimes just with a kick in the butt. Sometimes it's a what sold video. Sometimes it's a thrift with me. I do a lot of different kinds of videos all centered around reselling and I'd love for you to be a part of my community by subscribing. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for listening to my TED talk and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!